Hi, my name is Rebecca, and in this video we'll be talking about the TOEFL IBT structure as well as the skills, all right? Because the exam has a particular structure, and it also has certain skills that are required in order for you to do really well, okay? So let's discuss what these are. Let's start first with the structure. The TOEFL IBT exam is an exam which lasts for about four hours, and it has four different sections. They are reading, listening, speaking, and writing. And they come in that order, okay? You have about a 10 minute break after the reading and listening sections, all right? That's the basic structure which you need to be aware of. The reading section lasts for 60 to 100 minutes. The listening section lasts for about 40 to 60 minutes. The, then you have your 10 minute break or so. The speaking section lasts for about 20 minutes. And last of all, you have your writing section, which lasts for about 50 minutes. You have two tasks to do there, okay? So that's the overall structure of your exam. Now let's look at how you can do well. And in order to understand how to do well, you need to see what skills are involved in the TOEFL IBT exam. Some students think because we are testing reading, writing, listening, and speaking, that these are the four skills and that's that. Well, yes and no. In order to do well in reading, writing, listening, and speaking, there are a number of other skills involved which are written on the board, so let's have a look at these, okay? All right, so we could say that the skills that are required for you to do well on the TOEFL IBT exam are language skills as well as academic skills. By language skills, we can say some primary language skills and some secondary language skills. The primary ones are the ones you mentioned in the beginning and the ones that most students expect, which are reading, writing, listening, and speaking, all right? But what else is involved in order for you to do well in these parts? Let's look at that. Uh, this is where some of the secondary language skills come in. Grammar is no longer tested directly on the TOEFL IBT. It used to be in previous versions of the test, but luckily for you, it's not there as a specific section anymore. But we have grammar tested indirectly. How? Well, when you speak, you should be using correct grammar. And when you write, you should also be using correct grammar. So grammar will be tested indirectly in your TOEFL IBT exam, okay? Also, vocabulary is tested throughout, reading, writing, listening, speaking. Pronunciation does matter. When we say that pronunciation does matter, it doesn't mean that you have to speak with an American accent or a British accent or a South African accent or anything special. What you do have to do is to speak correctly and clearly so that anyone else who's listening can understand you. That's the critical part. Every single human being who speaks English has an accent. I have an accent and each of you has an accent. And that's perfectly fine. If I tried to speak your language, I would also not sound like you. And that's perfectly fine as long as I can be understood. So that's what you should keep in mind when you're uh, trying to speak English, to enunciate clearly, but don't necessarily try to imitate a particular accent or not. And if there are any specific errors in pronunciation, then those would need to be corrected because otherwise somebody could understand something quite different from what you intend to say, okay? That's about pronunciation. Spelling is another skill that comes in. Obviously, this will matter in your writing section. And related writing skills are capitalization and punctuation. You have to know which words to capitalize and how to punctuate your sentences and paragraphs, all right? So these are some of the language skills which are required and tested directly or indirectly in the TOEFL IBT exam, all right? Now let's look at some of the other support skills that you require, which lots of times students are not aware of. And they don't understand that if they're weak in those skills, that's going to undermine 
their success in the TOEFL IBT. What I mean by undermine is that's going to make it more difficult. That's going to weaken their ability for them to get a high score in the TOEFL IBT exam. So let's look at what some of these academic skills are, okay? The first one is skimming. What is skimming? Skimming is a skill related to the act of reading. Skimming means running quickly through a passage to get a general idea of what it's about. What does that mean? For example, in the morning when you get the newspaper, if you still get the newspaper at home and you don't read everything online, uh, you see the headline and you want to know what happened. So you just read quickly through the article to see to get a general idea, a quick general idea of what it's about. That's called skimming, all right? Then after that is scanning. What's the difference between skimming and scanning? Scanning is when you're looking for a particular piece of information. Skimming allows you to run through the entire passage and scanning, you're also running through the passage but with a different purpose in mind. The purpose is to look for a particular piece of information. For example, if you read a news story about an earthquake happening in a particular country, you might skim the passage and then you'll have general knowledge about the earthquake. But if you happen to have family or you know someone in the area where the earthquake struck, then you might be looking for more specific information about where that earthquake took place, right? So you might be looking for the name of a city, for example. That would be an example of scanning because you're looking for the specific information. All right, another skill that you require, an academic skill, is synthesizing. What does synthesizing mean? Synthesizing means combining information, integrating information, which you receive from different sources. In the TOEFL IBT, it is an example of uh, synthesizing, is an example of the integrated skill that they are testing. You are asked sometimes to read something, to listen to something, and then to write about it. Or to read something, listen to something, and speak about it. All of this requires the ability to synthesize or combine information. Okay? All right. Next point, summarizing. Again, when you read and hear different kinds of information, you want to summarize it, mention um, kind of encapsulate it or summarize it in short, all right? Write about it in short. When you summarize, the final length of your passage is shorter than the original passages, okay? Another very important skill, which students uh, sometimes struggle with, actually, is note-taking. Uh, they don't always understand the importance of that, but when you're doing a TOEFL exam and you're doing the listening passages, you have to know how to take notes very quickly and effectively. This is a kind of skill in itself which you do develop as you go, um, as you're in school, but also more so in university because you have so much information coming at you and you have to be able to decide which is the relevant information and which is not as relevant and be able to record that information in some way. This is really important on the TOEFL IBT because in the listening section, uh, if you have effective notes, it can help you to answer your questions. In the writing section, if you've taken effective notes, you'll be able to write your first task very effectively where you have a reading and a listening and then you have to combine that information. Okay, so this is another skill to work on quite separately. Another one is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing means basically expressing the same ideas in different words, all right? So when you paraphrase, um, you take the original sentence and you express it in your own words. You're actually not allowed at all in the TOEFL IBT or in university to copy somebody else's words. Uh, you are not allowed to do that because that's called plagiarism. And plagiarism is a very serious offense in universities and also on the TOEFL. If you're asked to combine information from a reading passage, for example, and listening, and if you copy something from the reading directly, more than maybe one or two words, uh, that could be evidence of plagiarism. So you want to learn a variety of techniques to enable you to paraphrase effectively. So make sure you also get a lot of practice doing that, okay? 
And the last one is something minor. Most students today, most young students who've grown up around computers are quite comfortable with this. This is keyboarding. And keyboarding basically just means being able to type on the keyboard uh, into a computer. All right? You need to be able to do that in your TOEFL exam, on your writing section, because the entire exam will be typed in. Okay? So that's a uh, kind of overview for you of TOEFL skills that are required. So next time you are studying, please bear in mind not only to work on your reading, writing, listening, and speaking, but to understand that all of these skills are going to determine how well you do on your TOEFL. And of course, I wish you a lot of luck with your TOEFL. If you'd like more information about the TOEFL exam, you can go to my website. It's www.goodlucktoefl.com. And if you have any other questions about English or about TOEFL or IELTS or anything else, then please visit our website at www.ingvid.com. Okay? That's it for now. See you later. Bye for now.